Good morning, everyone. First thing in the morning, coffee. Not always the fancy one in the jug, but sure. If I don't do it today, when will I do it? It's usually just instant. But coffee is the number one thing for me in the morning. Now we'll go back to a day in the life of my kitchen. Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to do a day in the life of my kitchen. So we're starting off this morning with sourdough pancakes. It's a Thursday morning and one of the children requested pancakes, um, which I wouldn't normally comply with, but I am trying to revitalize my sourdough starter. So it was in the fridge for weeks and weeks and it didn't look very well yesterday. So I fed it yesterday evening and so I wanted to get rid of some of the discard from it this morning. So I said, why not make these pancakes? So that's what I did. So I put the starter, the discard in here, added some more flour, some sugar and an egg. We have it, breakfast on a Thursday morning. And they had a choice of caster sugar, maple syrup, um, real maple syrup, golden syrup, lemon juice, and what are they going for? Chocolate spread. What about you, Diane? What do you go for? I want to sleep and play. Oh, yummy. Okay, bon appetito. God bless this food. And now I'm on to the school lunches. Breakfast is over. So they have just a little wrap each and there's their bottles of water. They're going to have the rice cake and there's a tiny treat, a few crisps in a container. These are O'Donnell's of Tipperary Irish Sea Salt. So it's just a nibble. And some fruit. So I have two, who like pears, two out of three. So I'll give them a half each. No, not that one. This one and this one. And then some apple. for the one who doesn't like pear. 
and there's the three lunches. Tick the box, lunch is done. Okay, for dinner I'm going to attempt um, a beef pie. Let's see how we get on. So I'm starting off by heating my pot. I have olive oil in here and I will brown my meat. And I love garlic in everything, so of course I'm going to put some garlic into this beef pie. Now there's my lovely stewing beef. Add this in. Into my soft onions. Sure to brown my meat. Just preparing my carrots now. The recipes I looked at said to leave these quite chunky so that they don't turn to mush, I suppose. Hi. Well, I won't add these now to the meat until the meat is all brown. And then we'll add in our beef stock as well. Around 600 mils. My meat is nicely browned now, so I'm going to add in my carrots and my garlic. Cook this for another few minutes before I add the flour. Now my stock cube in here ready to add the boiling water. I'm using these Cano organic beef stock cubes. I've added 500 mils of water to the stock cube. always add more water to the meat later if I think it needs it. And I think I'm ready to add my flour. I'll start with one tablespoon but I have a feeling I might add another little bit. I'll go for another half a tablespoon. We want a nice thick gravy. Mix that in. Flour cook for a minute before I add the stock. So today, because I have short crust pastry in the freezer, that's what I'm going to use for this pie. Now I'm sure I have some viewers here who are really good at doing pies, especially the British viewers. I know you love your pies and you're really good at doing them. What pastry would you use for your pie? Am I, go, am I completely crazy using short crust? But I'll see how it goes. Now I think I'm ready to add my stock. I'm going to add it slowly. time since I made a pie now so I'm really looking forward to it. Normally with this stew beef of course I just make a stew. A good old Irish beef stew. One of our customary 
dishes, beef stew. Of course, you can have Guinness beef, beef stew. And of course, bacon and cabbage is really the real traditional Irish dish. If you haven't seen it, you can go back and look at my collaboration with Hayley from Mummy Cooks Homemade. Last Saturday, I put up my bacon and cabbage and she put up her um, toad in the hole. And the week before, we had experimented with uh, a dish from each other's country. So I did toad in the hole, which I'd never made before, and she made bacon and cabbage. And it was really good fun. So if you haven't seen those videos, go on back and have a look at them. Now I'm just going to leave that simmering for about two hours until I think the, be the, the meat is almost cooked or it might as well be cooked at that stage. I'm going to just season this now with salt and pepper. If I, if I had been more organised in the morning I could have put all this in my slow cooker and have it cooking away for the day. But I wasn't, my meat wasn't even defrosted. So I'm going to leave this on a low heat and just leave it simmering for two hours. It is now 25 past 12. So I'll be able to check on this just before I collect the children at half two. And then hopefully I'll be ready to assemble the pies. I'm back and it's 10 past one. I'm going to give this a little stir, make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. It's looking delicious and it's smelling even more delicious. And the next thing we're going to do now in the kitchen is I'm going to try and make some bread in my bread maker. I only have this bread maker a couple of weeks and I've been experimenting. And yesterday I made a quick bread from the, uh, the booklet that came with the bread maker. And the taste was fabulous, but it flopped. When it started to bake in the bread maker, it just flopped. So I'm trying again today and I'm just going to tweak the ingredients a little bit. So we're going to start off with room temperature water, but the ingredients have powdered milk also, which I don't have. So I just Googled there what I do. Uh, so it said to take out a cup of water, of the water out of the ingredients and use regular milk instead. So that's what I'm doing. I'm removing one cup of water from my 310 mils of room temperature water and I'm going to have a cup of milk instead. Now almost there. I said I might have had too much liquid as well. So into the bread maker I'm going to put my milk, the remaining water, room temperature water and next is three tablespoons of butter, which I didn't melt yesterday. I'm going to melt them today. Might disperse a little bit better. Salt is one teaspoon of salt, and I'm using low salt. Now this bread tasted amazing, and it was such, so disappointing when it flopped, because it was rising so well as well. One teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of sugar, milk in already and then flour is 500, 520 grams so I've put on my weighing scales here and 520 grams and today I'm actually using this strong baker's flour which I didn't use before it's Fitzgerald's so hopefully this will help as well so 520 grams I just used regular old flour yesterday. So anyone out there who has a bre bread maker and you have a really good bread recipe and you wouldn't mind sharing it, you could pop it in the comments. Now, so that's gone slightly over, I'll just take out six grams. Five hundred and twenty. 
20. There we go. And next is the yeast powder. And I'm using this instant dry yeast. And it says to use one four teaspoons. One teaspoon. Sorry, <laughs> the, 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 the recipe popped over onto the wrong page there on me. So um, one teaspoon of yeast flour. I was thinking that was a bit different yesterday. <laughs> One teaspoon of yeast. And I'm gonna pop this into the bread maker. So here we go. Down into the bread maker. A little twist to get it in place. And we'll pop it on. And I'm going to use the basic, which is number one. So it's already on number one. Next is time I'm gonna leave oh it's a thousand yeah that's the biggest loaf so I'm gonna leave it at three hours and I no that's moving the time I don't want to do that oh I don't know what I'm doing there go back go back go back and then I want a dark crust dark and away we go and yesterday I opened the lid to have a peek in at different stages so I won't do that today either, and we'll see what happens. We'll hope for the best. Now the beef has been cooking for about an hour and ten minutes. I've just been looking up a couple of other recipes and it said to cook the beef and veg here for about an hour and a half and then transfer it to the oven after you've cooled, after you let the meat cool down. So um, I might have a check on this now in about another half an hour and see is it ready to let it cool down. We'll know by the meat. And are the carrots cooking nicely? Yeah, the carrots are cooking really well. Now what I forgot to have earlier on is I have one of these every day. Vitamin C and zinc. And I make a big pint out of it. So I add one. And then about two thirds cold water. hot water and let it dissolve and I'm really bad at drinking water but I get a pint into me at least anyway and I will drink some more water later on too but this is a great way to get my vitamin C and zinc also especially during these strange times I had my vitamin D this morning my vitamin D capsule now it is 10 to 2 and I'm back looking at this and I just think that this gravy needs a bit thick of thickening up so I'm going to add another teaspoon of a teaspoon of flour that's the bread machine kneading away in the background thing to say I can add in any extra ingredients I want to add so I'm just going to add something in now. So I'm going to add in this milled brown flaxseed with nuts, just a couple of teaspoons. So fingers crossed, all is going to go well this time. When it stops kneading now, I'm going to take out the dough and just remove the little fin that's at the bottom of the base there to that's kneading the bread. And then hopefully I won't have a big hole in the bottom of my bread either. I've buttered my pie dish and I'm going to start building up 
getting this ready for actually I think I will roll it out a little bit first. I had this pastry in my freezer for a while so it's great to get it used up. Hence the fact that I'm using shortcut pastry. They had it. Yeah. I had been thinking of using these individual little pie dishes, but I'd need an awful lot more pastry. And I'm not in the mood for running to the shop for more, so I'm just using the one dish for everybody. I'm going to check the meat. Now that has thickened up really nice. So I'm gonna leave this aside to cool. I might remove it from this pot now and it'll cool a lot faster. And it's two o'clock. And I've, I have tasted a little bit of the meat and it does taste cooked, so I think we're ready to go. I will put this into a different bowl while it's cooling down. There we go, and we'll just leave it to cool. to get ready um, a snack for the kids to have when they come home from school. So their snack is going to be natural yogurt. I'm going to peel and chop up these oranges and add it in and they can have a leftover pancake each from this morning as well and that'll be enough to keep them going until this beautiful beef pie is ready for dinner which we'll have probably around five or half five. The bread machine has stopped um, kneading so I'm going to go over now and I'm going to remove and it's gone into the second rise so I'm actually going to remove the little paddle now and hopefully that'll help with the bread too. Oh it feels really nice. Gently just remove it for a moment and I'll show you what I mean about the paddle. Here it is. And every bread, other bread I've made, I've left this in and then it's been stuck in the bread and then there's a big hole. So hopefully this will make a massive difference. It feels really, really nice. There's a lovely spring in it too, look. So I'll gently pop that back down. And 
and hopefully we'll have a delicious bread. So I'm not going to open it anymore now. There's two hours and 13 minutes left. It's on the rise now, the second rise. I did my best to get all the pith off. Now they're not babies anymore, so I don't need to be worried too much about it. So if you don't know, I have three kids, an 11 year old, a nine year old and a seven year old. So at the moment they're easy to remember, 11, nine and seven. When it comes to the middle of April, it'll be 11, 10 and seven. And then in September, 11, 10, no, 12, 10 and seven. And then in October, Oh, I'm getting all mixed up now. I'm sure you're not too interested anyway. <laughs> By the time it comes to October, it'll be 12, 10, and 8. So the three of them are still in primary school. The oldest has one more year to go after this year. That's a boy and two girls I have. The boy's the oldest. And they do nothing but think about food from one end of the day to the other. So now that's even enough. And some yogurt on top. And yes, they will devour this. They've been eating natural yogurt since, since they were allowed eaters when they were babies. Probably from the age of one. Even less, actually. I can't remember, but aren't they allowed solids from six months-ish? So I've always given them natural yogurt. And now I have a little dollop of tomato yogurt. No, not tomato yogurt. Strawberry yogurt left over in another tub. So I'll put a little bit of that on top. And then I think I might have the rest myself. Here we go, three snacks ready, and I'll just pop a breadstick into each of them. So when they come in from school, they change their clothes, get rid of their lunch boxes, and then it's snack time, we sit down and have a little chat. And then it's homework time. So we're, it's 10 past two, I'll be picking them up at half two. Actually, two are only coming home today. One is staying back for after school music. Here we go. And it's 20 to three and the kids are, two kids are home. And there's their snack and they have their vitamin D capsule that I forgot to give this morning as well. So we're into the second round of the day. It's pancakes. <laughs> and we're into the second part of the day with the children home again. And now I have the oven heating up. Get an egg ready. Do the egg wash. And we'll pour in our mixture. Delicious. And now I'll get the, the lid. Now I'll egg wash the sides. The oven is heating up. Child number three is in from music. And having her snack. And here goes the lid. This will give a nice golden colour. Now we'll plunk these on. Very nice indeed.
and I'm just going to prick it in a couple of little spots to let the steam out. Now I might as well do a nice design around the edge too. in the oven for about 40 minutes and now it's 20 past four the bread is after beeping so let's see let's see if it flopped yay it didn't flop wow miracle so try and take it out now and there it is I'm going to let it cool just for a minute or two and then we'll put it onto a wire rack and there we have it, a beautiful loaf. First proper success now in the bread machine, so I'm delighted. And there's our pie out of the oven after 40 minutes. And it looks absolutely delicious. Now we'll see what the bread looks like. Very nice. And there isn't a big hole in the middle of it like the one I had did yesterday. did today with that to make sure I'm able to get the same again. So there, nice and fresh. <laughs> 